Hey there guys, what's going on? So today is a catch-up day. It is a vinyl unboxing day. And in this particular installment, we're going to catch up on some of the things that I acquired while I was in Williamsburg at the Rough Trade store out there. And one of the records that I got when I returned from that whole vacation hiatus business. And while there will be more stuff on Williamsburg and that whole NYC thing in a different video writing thing right now, this is where we're, this is what we're doing, this is where we are, and let us begin with the first record, which is Chris Christopherson, Please Don't Tell Me How the Story Ends, the publishing demos, 1968 to 1972. Now, when I was at Williamsburg at the Rough Trade facility, I was really very, very much impressed with their variety and selection. And one of the great things that I found buried in all the stacks, something I didn't even know existed, was this little gem from 2010, courtesy of Late in the Attic Records, who are known for releases like uh, Rodriguez, the, uh, the Emerson Brothers, little hole-in-the-wall kind of things. And for this, they worked exclusively with Chris on digging up some of his earliest recordings when he was first getting into the business, when he was kind of transitioning from being this guy who flew military helicopters, who was at West Point, who was a boxer, who did all these things, kind of dropped what he was doing to go and be a musician, or to go and first be a janitor at a recording studio, where he ended up later writing songs and you know getting noticed by Johnny Cash and becoming this amazing, beautiful, brilliant songwriter. But on this record, it's a really cool thing. Cause it's like his his origins, his starting point, and you get a lot of that impression with like the artwork here. You get kind of the early, earliest photo. This whole set up with photograph attached, kind of this whole demo, the papers and things, the way that it's set up in here on the back, you get like the, almost like, I wouldn't say bill of sale, but like just the whole thing behind doing demo sessions, and I think that's just, a, that's a really cool artistic design thing. Not a gatefold, but it does come with two LPs, which are in this very little this pretty little light in the attic records design thing here which has a retro old school feel to it and has all these other releases that they've done on the back and inside basically the LPs look like this which is very cool and I won't show you the second one because like I said they're pretty similar in that regard good feel to them good weight they play nicely sound good and inside here it comes with a really cool booklet with this on the front and this on the back and this is really a great part of this you know this kind of this issue this release is just you go through this and it tells you so many cool things if I don't drop it and send it flying here uh, so much cool backstory background there's a, a photo of Chris as a boxer here on this page you get some some really interesting backstory when he was just completely not the guy he was going to be later on that junior lawyer look for him and then on the last page which is the best part it has all of the the songs that are on this release as well as sort of Chris's notes and insight as well as lyrics and kind of the things behind them what they were doing who came in for the session whether it was just uh, Chris on guitar or he bring in a couple of guys uh, guys like Stephen Bruton He was working with Stephen Bruton even at the very beginning of his career the very start of it and just really cool stuff like with uh, Me and Bobby McGee here, which you know is probably the the greatest most well-known song that Chris has ever done You know obviously covered by Janis Joplin you know, there's a great backstory of how that started, who gave him the initial idea, even for like the title and where the whole song just started and how he gave credit to the guy who gave him the title and he didn't have to do that, but it was a nice karmic kind of thing that he did. And it goes through from like these long stories to just really short stories of who, like uh, his ex-wife at the time, Rita Coolidge, cutting a track or something that uh, in 69 or 70, in different studios, just different stuff about evolutions of songs. Uh, Epitaph, Black and Blue, which is a tribute to Janice, which he did a few times over the years, culminating in a really beautiful little song that kind of remembers the other departed musicians 
on uh, this old road, which I think was 2009, 2010. It was se several years ago, maybe a little bit further back than that, but I love this old road. What a beautiful full circle record kind of coming to the other circle of a, of a life well lived and so creatively li lived out and just so much great stuff is on that album. Just really great stuff from both the slightly whimsically humorous to the deathly serious to the prolific to just so much in between and so much just about the early origins of one of country music, classic country music's great songwriters with Chris Christopherson. Please don't tell me how the story ends, the publishing demos, 1968 to 1972. And I think we'll be offering a bonus track from this one, as well as one other release that I'm about to talk about next, as extra videos here on my channel. But let's get to the next one here, moving right along, with the Hardworking Americans album. Now, this is a 2014 release. We're up into the present year. This came out back in January. And a big part of me discovering this is the recent obsession uh, plunging into the, cat the, the catalog, not the category, the catalog of Todd Snyder's music because Hardworking Americans is a super group that consists of Todd Snyder, Dwayne Trucks, Chad Staley, Neil Casal of uh, Cardinals and his own solo career fame, and Dave Schools, all from different bands, different stuff, all come together to do this album of covers featuring the likes of Gillian Welch, featuring the likes of songs by Will Kimbrough, Randy Newman, Hayes Carl, all kinds of really great stuff on here. And this is the cover. Probably one of my favorite releases of 2014 for a covers record, like a super group kind of a thing. Probably one of the best, like, quote unquote, super group efforts I've heard in quite a long time. Such a fun record. It is a double disc, a double LP record. It has a beautiful gatefold in there with some behind the scenes studio stuff going on. You've got. You've got this LP here, which has got some cool little stuff with the uh, the designs from the record sleeves on the inside there. And second LP, pretty much the same deal, a little bit of different artwork, but that's not such a big difference. And like just one more time because the artwork is so much fun. Here is the front and here is the back. Just such a good release here with these guys. These guys are already such a, a, a tight, cohesive unit going from like blues rock to featuring John Popper playing harmonica on a song to country folk to just really s just sensitive heartfelt stuff to just stuff about the working man kind of these blue collar covers and it, this is just like this is one of the can't miss under the radar records for this year and lastly because we are on a Todd Snyder note here I want to close this with the only other Snyder release that there is that is currently on vinyl in the midst of my wanting to immerse myself in the collection of his music that is both uh, comedic genius, heartfelt genius, well-written poetic genius, all, all manner of things and is actually an inspiration for a piece I wrote on my WordPress blog that is really amazing. You should check that out. Uh, but I managed to snag this from 2012 and I saw this so many times in 2012 and didn't even think twice about getting it. So I finally made up for that mistake by getting Todd Snyder's Agnostic Hymns and Stoner Fables. And this is the back cover here. Features some great backing, vo uh, backing vocals and some fiddle work from Amanda Pearl Shires, who is married to Jason Isbell. Just, she's a great contributor. And great songs on here in the beginning. New York Banker, uh, The Very Last Time, In Between Jobs, Too Soon to Tell, uh, Big Finish, Digger Dave's Crazy Woman Blues, all of the, the best of Todd and more of like a blues rock shell kind of talking of you know, doing his usual story songs, his usual stuff from crooked bankers and uh, studies of religion to why kids just don't pull their pants up high enough. This is the, the inside. It is a single LP gatefold and here is the, the gatefold in there featuring I'm guessing the actual photo that this little doodle is based on and you've got song credits all of the usual band credits uh, Chad Staley played on this one too uh, and Jason Isbell is featured 
uh, Chad Staley, in addition to the Hardworking Americans release there, management, booking, recorded by so-and-so, find him on Facebook, social media, all of the above. And while I would say it would be cool to see Todd return to his solo roots again right now, this is the LP centers, of course. It is pretty damn awesome to see the stuff he's doing with hardworking Americans. All that stuff under the sun, really amazing right now. Just, I can't really recommend that enough. And that is Todd Snyder with Agnostic Hymns and Stoner Fables, as well as Hardworking Americans with Hardworking Americans, and Chris Christofferson with Please Don't Tell Me How the Story Ends, the publishing demos. So this is a vinyl unboxing for the, the NYC acquisitions as well as uh, a fun little acquisition when I got back. Some more vacation stuff, some more things we're tidying up here. Just another quick catch-up video. Hope you all enjoy this. Enjoy the bonus songs. I'm going to do one from uh, Chris, of course, one from Hardworking Americans. Close it with that and keep it here for more really cool stuff soon to come.